I'm Jamie, and today is March 28th, and it's also Palm Sunday. That's right, and this is the place for you to stay up to date with all the things that are going on here at Word of Peace. Speaking of Palm Sunday, we've yes. got a great opportunity for you to join us today at 11 o'clock across the street, yep. and uh, we're going to do a Palm Processional. Just come, join us. It'll be wonderful to see everybody outside. It's a beautiful day. It'll be awesome. And if you are worried about the walk, you can just join us here at the church in the parking lot. That's right, yeah. that's right. Jamie, there's lots of other things going on for Easter as well, right? There is. That's right, we're actually in front of one of the stations for our Good Friday walk. Um, you can check out all the information for everything Easter and Holy Week related at wordofpeace.org slash Easter. Guess what day is happening on April 11th? Uh, that's a Sunday, so I think it has something to do with worship. It does. In-person service for three services. Oh, that's exciting. It is. Now, don't worry. We will still be doing the live stream at 945. Okay. But make sure you go to wordofpeace.org forward slash worship to register for one of the three services. We also will be doing a Monday night service. That's right. That's yes. great. So if you miss Sunday, you can come on Monday night. Absolutely. Awesome. So, you, and like I said, still can watch the live stream at 945 or on demand after that. That's going to be great. I'm really excited to see a whole bunch of people. Oh, it's going to be awesome. Yeah. Well, we've got another great announcement for you. Um, we are preparing a meal for Sharing and Caring Hands. It's going to be an awesome macaroni tuna salad that we're going to take down uh, to Sharing and Caring Hands in Minneapolis. Uh, and those donations are due by April 6th. Yeah. Guess what? What? This is the moment we've been waiting for. Oh, are you talking about March Mayhem? Uh, yeah! March Mayhem! Yes! Word of Peace, you've done it again! What another fantastic week of bringing in food donations for Minnesota Food Share and our March Mayhem campaign. I am excited to announce that last week's champs were the Babyface Kids and the Can Do Adults! This week, it is a free for all. Each team will be competing against all the other teams to see who can do the best this week. It's the final stretch. The last lap. Double overtime. It's the fourth quarter. Trading faint. They're rounding the last turn. We're headed for home. So word of peace, this is the last week. Bring in all of your remaining donations for Minnesota Food Share. Let's love our neighbors big. What if you woke up tomorrow with only the things that you thank God for today? Take a look around you, you are so blessed. Do you know that half the world's population lives on less than $6 a day? We are blessed beyond our deserving. So come on, let's get with this thing. Write a check to Word of Peace and in the memo put March Mayhem Seniors and let's do this thing. We are all God's children. Let's be a chip off the old block. Okay, baby face kids, great moments are born from great opportunity. That's what we have this week. One week, that's what we have. You were born to help others. On any other week, the other teams might win, but this is our week. This is your time. Now go out there and bring in some baby food, some wipes, some diapers, some puffed rice, sweet potatoes, all of it. This is our week. Hey, can do adults. This last year has been hard. Some of you may have lost a job. Some of you became at home teachers while working. And if you were a younger and in college, maybe you moved back home with your parents to finish your education. None of that would have been possible if you hadn't said, yes, we can. And this March mayhem, you guys have shown up. You have done it. You have said yes, because that's all we can do to love our neighbors. We will finish strong and we will say, yes, we can. All right, team youth, huddle up. It is time to go. We're fourth down and in inches. I don't care if we're up against Michael, Don, Lydia, or Tom Brady. Please, can you say overrated? We gotta finish this drive with a touchdown and bring home that W. The play call was to bring your box items here to church, but I'm calling an audible. That's right. Many of you know where I live. Bring your box items to my house and I'll bring them down here to the end zone myself. Let's do this, finish strong and win this thing. Who will come out on top? Will it come down to the wire? 
Either way, let's love our neighbor and support our local food shelf cross services. For more information on how and where to donate, visit wordofpeace.org slash mnfoodshare. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Welcome to Palm Sunday Worship. We are delighted to have you with us. I'm Pastor Kristen Scar, and on behalf of this congregation, all of our pastors and staff, we are so glad that you are here. We welcome you to the beginning of Holy Week that we start today with Palm Sunday, and we encourage you to look at all of the things that are happening this week on Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and on Easter Saturday and Easter Sunday, and look at how you can participate in remembering that Jesus is with us and Jesus is for us. With that, let's light our candles and begin worship. Welcome again to worship. We're so glad that you're here. This is a chance for you to raise your palm branches high and sing loud with us at home. Please join us. All glory, Lord, and honor to you, Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring. I invite you to join me responsibly in the call to worship. And as we do so, I invite you to raise your palms if you have palms at home, or kids, if you've made homemade palms, you can raise those now. If you don't have a palm, simply raise up your hands in a gesture of praise to God. The story of faith is a story of courage. It took courage for John the Baptist to prepare the way. It took courage for Mary to say, Here I am, use me. It took courage 
for the disciples to drop their nets and follow Jesus. It took courage for the paralyzed man's friends to lower him through the roof. It took courage for Peter to walk on the water. It took courage for Zacchaeus to give half of his possessions to the poor. It took courage for Jesus to enter Jerusalem on a donkey. Faith has never been easy. It is a journey of courage. Again and again, God, show us the way. Let us worship a brave and courageous God. And so we come before God courageously and honestly, confessing our sin and hearing God's courageous words of forgiveness. Let us join together in confession. God of palm branches and alleluias, we confess. We love a good Palm Sunday celebration. We love the sound of a joyful parade. We love shouting, Alleluia. We love that Palm Sunday means Easter is just around the corner. We love good news. However, if we slow down and pay attention, we know that Palm Sunday was not a walk in the park for you. There was risk. There was fear. There was the threat of violence. You were leading a peaceful protest against an unjust empire, and the whole world knew it. Forgive us for glossing over the courage this day took. Remind us that the story of faith is a story of courage. And even when we do hard things, with hope we pray. Amen. Family of faith, even when we gloss over the truth, even when our courage fails us, even when we doubt that we can do hard things, God believes in us. God loves us. God forgives us. Hear this truth and believe. We are known. We are loved. We are forgiven again and again and again. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We join together now in the prayer of the day as we prepare our hearts and minds to hear God's word. Holy God, as you have so often done again and again, open our ears. Clear out the self-talk that keeps us from you. Dust out the negativity and distractions. Remove any doubt hindering our way. Amen. All right, it's time for the children's message. Kids, get close to your screens because Miss Dawn is here and we have a special message just for you. Well, hello, Miss Dawn. Hello, Pastor Rick. Hello, everybody. Happy Palm Sunday. Happy Palm Sunday. Oh. Yes. What? Well, what do you have with you today? Well, thank you for asking. I have all kinds of wonderful things to do some cleaning. Wow, some cleaning. Yes, huh? I have my Lent gloves on here. See the purple? Isn't Very that great? Very appropriate color. And my duster and my spray bottles, yes. spraying a few things, and some Lysol because, you know, germs. Oh, yes. I've got a magic eraser for scuff marks, things like that. Mm -hmm. All my favorite clean supplies. Wow, wow. So you do all that to prepare for guests, huh? I do. If I have somebody coming to my house, I want to make sure my house looks really nice and clean, or at least picked up, right? That's, and yeah. so all these things help me to make sure my house is clean. Well, that's a good idea. Do, do anything else to prepare for guests to come? Well, sometimes if I'm going to be feeding them some food, I like to cook a nice meal or maybe even just a nice snack. Oh, that's a great idea. You really make them feel welcome, don't you? Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I love welcoming people to my house. That's great. You know, the people in Jerusalem really made Jesus feel welcome on Palm Sunday. They welcomed Jesus into the city by climbing up into the palm trees and cutting down palm branches. And then when Jesus came riding into Jerusalem on a donkey, the people would lay their coats before him on the road 
and they'd wave their palm branches and they'd all shout, Hosanna, Hosanna, which means God save us. And that was a way of welcoming Jesus into Jerusalem as king. Wow, that sounds like a lot of fun. A lot more fun than cleaning house to welcome people. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I suppose so. And, And, you know, we can do that in our lives too. There are ways that we can welcome Jesus into our lives as king and celebrate him as king as well. So it's a very good thing to keep in mind. Well, Ms. Don, uh, you know what? In a moment, we're going to watch a very special video. We've had our church school kids send in their pictures of their own palms and waving their palms and showing us how they welcome Jesus into their lives. Absolutely. You kids have grown so much. We love seeing pictures of you, and your crafty palms are amazing. I can't wait to see it. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's say a prayer, and then we'll watch the video as we also receive our offering. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus, we thank you for coming into our lives. We thank you for coming into our lives. And on this Palm Sunday, and on this Palm Sunday, may we remember May we remember to always welcome you to always welcome you and celebrate you as king and celebrate you as king. Amen. Amen. Let's see those pictures of our kids. Oh, that'll be fun. Let's see. The Holy Gospel this Palm Sunday comes from the 12th chapter of John. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, the one whom he had raised from the dead. And there they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of the disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put in it. So Jesus said, Leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. 
You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. When the great crowd of the Jews learned that he was there, they came not only to see Jesus, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priest planned to put Lazarus to death as well, since it was on account of him that many of the Jews were deserting and were believing in Jesus. The next day, the great crowd that had come to the festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and began to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel! And Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, as it is written, Do not be afraid, daughter of Zion. Look, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first. But when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written of him and had been done to him. So the crowd that had been with him when he had called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead, they continued to testify. It was also because they heard that he had performed this sign that the crowd went to meet him. The Pharisees then said to one another, You see, you can do nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. It is so good to have you here on this Palm Sunday. We are so excited to have seen all those pictures of all the kids' palm branches that they made. Oh, I can hardly wait until we can have children in the building again in throngs singing and waving those palm branches in person. You know, it's been a long time since we've been able to gather in person safely together. Now, believe it or not, I am an introvert. I am. I get my energy from being on my own and reading and writing and gardening and hiking. That's where I get my energy but this past year has been really difficult even for the introverts in the world because we long for human connection to be together. Won't it be a privilege to be able to gather again in groups of people and be able to eat food and have conversations and actually meet new people? Now, have you noticed when we do gather in new groups and are meeting new people, when we introduce our friends to one another, we don't just introduce them by their name, we introduce them by what they do in the world. You know, it goes like this, hi, this is Kristen, she's a pastor. Or, this is my friend Brian, he's a mechanical engineer. These introductions seem harmless enough, right? Well, they seem harmless until what you do isn't what you do anymore. So if you are unemployed, or if you've retired, or you've decided to leave your job to stay at home full-time, you're never more aware in those moments how much your identity is tied to what you do in the world. High school seniors are especially feeling this pressure right now. As they prepare to graduate from high school, one of the questions that they are getting the most right now is what do you want to do when you grow up? Now this question implies that somehow they aren't fully somebody until they are doing something. We spend an abundance of time asking people the wrong questions, don't you think? Rather than asking, what do you do, 
Perhaps the better question is, who are you? Today's reading in John is a dramatic story where Mary and Jesus and the crowds that gather outside of Jerusalem are the main characters of this story. And who they are is problematic to Judas and the religious and political authorities of the time. Jesus is a religious outlier and raises Lazarus from the dead. And Mary is a woman who walks uninvited into a room of men and anoints Jesus as the Messiah. And a crowd dares to gather outside of Jerusalem celebrating someone other than Caesar as Lord. Healing Anointing and waving palm branches seems harmless enough, but these were very subver subversive acts. Jesus' resurrection of Lazarus from the dead threatens the authority of religious leaders. Who do you think you are, Jesus? Women were not allowed into rooms gathered and filled with men uninvited and sit at the feet of a rabbi. Who do you think you are, Mary? And gathering as a crowd to celebrate anyone other than Caesar as Lord was dangerous in first century Palestine. Who do these people think they are? Who do they think they are? Jesus and Mary and the crowd have the courage to do what they did because God has shown them who they are. Because of their encounter with God, they are no longer defined by their jobs or their social status or their gender or their authority. Who they are is defined by who God is says that they are. Today we begin Holy Week. And for Christians, this is the most important week of the year. We spend this week gathering in worship, remembering Jesus' courage. It is no accident that we begin Holy Week celebrating that Palm Sunday is the day we remember that Jesus shook up the power dynamics of the world by riding into Jerusalem on a donkey colt, surrounded by throngs of people. Jesus was ushering in a new kingdom, a new way to live. In this kingdom, there is no longer Jew or Greek, slave or free, or male or female, and in this kingdom, the last will be first, and the first will be last. Because Jesus breaks down these barriers, Jesus gives us the courage to be who we were created to be in the world because who we are are children of God. We are one in Christ Jesus. Galatians 5 tells us that the fruits of living in this spirit, the fruits of the spirit, are joy and love and peace and forbearance and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. As followers of Jesus, these are not things we do these are the things that we are. This is who we are. Mary and the crowds and Jesus live in the fruits of the Spirit. It's who they are. Because Mary has encountered Jesus, she has the courage to go where she has been excluded. And because the crowds have been transformed by Jesus' teaching and healing, they have the courage to gather outside of Jerusalem in protest in the hope that there will be a different world that they can live in. 
And because God's love is stronger than death, Jesus has the courage to ride into Jerusalem to his death. When you know who you are, you have the courage to be who you were created to be. Ironically, these things, love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control often threaten people. American actor Denzel Washington says, some people will never like you because your spirit irritates their demons. This is why Judas goes after Mary. And this is why the religious leaders go after Jesus. And this is why Rome is fearful of the crowds that are gathering outside of Jerusalem. We celebrate Easter one week from today. And as we walk through Holy Week this week, my question for you is this. Is Easter something that you celebrate because it's something to do? Or is Easter something you are? Is Easter something you are? My hope is that today you pick up those palm branches and wave them with shouts of Hosanna because Easter is who you are and gives you the courage to be who you were created to be. God shows you through Jesus' life, death, and resurrection who you are. You are God's beloved. Jesus rode into Jerusalem for you. Jesus prays and suffers with you. Jesus' resurrection is for you. Again and again, Jesus gives us courage to do difficult things. Knowing this, I encourage you to lift up those palm branches and live differently. Perhaps the next time you gather with friends and introduce other friends to each other, rather than introducing them and what they do, introduce them and tell people who they are. This is my friend Michael. And he is compassionate. This is my friend Dawn, and she never lets you down. This is my friend Dane, and he always sees the good in people, even when it's hard. So who are you? As you begin this Holy Week, ask yourself that question. Who are you? Today, on this Palm Sunday, we celebrate the answer to that question. We celebrate that we have a God who rode into Jerusalem and says to the world, you are God's. God tells us who we are. Thanks be to God for Palm Sunday and that Jesus gives us the courage to be who we are. Amen. forsaken I'm accepted you were condemned I'm alive and well your spirit is within me because you died and rose again I'm forgiven
forgiven because you were forsaken I'm accepted you were condemned I'm alive and well your spirit is within me because you died and rose Let us now join together our hearts and minds in praying for the church, the world, and all of those in need. O oh Lord, your humble entry into Jerusalem is the model for your followers. Teach us to seek the well-being of others and help us to do the right things instead of the easy things. Make us like you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As the crowd spread branches of palms before you, so all creation rises up to praise you with its natural splendor. May we see your reflection in all that amazes us in this world, bearing the image of its mighty yet compassionate creator. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Humble Lord, your compassion never wavers. As your popularity surged and people crowded around you in awe of your healing powers, you never lost sight of those in need. Attend to those who are in need of your healing care, especially those who are ill or hurt, those that are battling cancer, and those who mourn the death of loved ones. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for the disciples who followed their Lord all the way to Jerusalem and whose faith was tested by the trials of this holy week. We too follow in their footsteps with the benefit of knowing how your story ends in resurrection victory for the sake of all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we embark on this final earthly journey with our Lord, hold us in your grace and hear the cries of our hearts. We pray in the name of our Savior, Jesus, the one who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now, beloved of God, as we journey together into this holy week, may you go also with God's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. People of God, go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Ho, 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 sana. Ha, 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 hallelujah. He, 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 he died for me, and I've got the joy of the Lord. 